when was the last time you went down to the altar in your church and gave your life to Christ or prayed for someone or got prophesied over or even got married? When was the last time you got demons expelled out of you or just needed that touch from someone that's near and dear to your heart? I don't know, brothers and sisters. I don't know your circumstance, but I know that there was many times that I went down to the altar, particularly in the church, and I got prayed for or prophesied over. Someone laid hands on me. And there were times, brothers and sisters, truth be told, where I didn't feel anything. And there were other times where I felt that just by going along to get along, it would forward the time, if you would, or speed up what was going on. It's true. There are people at times that go to the altar and they just don't feel anything. Well, this message is going out to the person who commented on one of my videos regarding that very thing. They were at the altar, somebody prophesied over them, and they just didn't feel anything. They didn't feel the move of God. They didn't feel that fuzzy feeling. They didn't manifest demons. They didn't spit. They didn't convulse. Nothing. It was just nothing happened. But people around them said that they saw them in the spirit or something. You see, one of the things that you have to realize, brothers and sisters, is that Anytime you feel the unction, okay, in a church setting to perform or to show out or to make the crowd pleased, you are not in the spirit of God, period, point blank. That is a false sense of getting in the spirit or getting in the presence of God, okay? If you don't feel anything, okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that the presence of God is not there either. I'm going to take my time with this. God is a God of order. He does things in order. And if you see in your church people backflipping or people doing things unseemly, over the top, exaggerated, you literally see people looking like they're fighting. I mean, I, I, I could show you a video where I turned down the music and I saw in a church where people were literally out of control. And you know that the Holy Spirit was not in that place. Okay. It was more so theatrical performance. And this is a lot of times what you see in the black churches. I'm not saying each and every church. I'm not saying each and every church that experienced the move of God, you know, doesn't have an outward experience. I'm not saying that either. I'm saying, though, that there's a lot of hypocrisy and there's a lot of things like the Kundalini experience going on. Look it up, book it up. But what I'm saying is don't feel, brothers and sisters, oftentimes where if you go down to the altar, OK, and you don't feel anything that you have to perform just to appease the people around you because oftentimes it's a psychological thing where you feel like wow I am the only one here that doesn't feel anything I am the only one here who's not moving or acting like the people around me so you're sticking out like a sore thumb but what if brothers and sisters what if you're the only one that's discerning the hypocrisy. What if you're the only one in that church setting that's discerning that this is actually unholy, that's realizing this is all a stage? The pastor's on the stage. The people are looking at a show. What if you're the only one that's discerning that? That can happen, brothers and sisters. And that touch that is not so uh, earth-shaking can be God telling you to mute all the music and all the theatrics and be still. 
What if God is telling you to observe what's really going on in the spirit? And what is really going on in the spirit is a lot of demonic manifestations all around you. Deep stuff. True stuff, deep stuff. So what I'm saying is just because you are at an altar, okay, in a church setting, and you don't feel anything, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, participate or partake or act wild and crazy and do backflip to appease the people around you. It's not a clear indication that the move of God is in that place. That church setting could be of the devil, brothers and sisters. That church setting could be orchestrated by Satan himself. Just because of a feeling, just because of a physical manifestation of something loud and and, and typical. Okay? So just because you're at the altar and just because somebody lays hands on you, which you have to be very careful who lays hands on you because they could be transferring demons on you. And a lot of people who are unlearned and unexperienced with things of the church, okay, if they get so caught up in the music, if they get so caught up in the ambiance, if they get so caught up on looking at the person or the people around them, they fall victim because it's a, it's it's just a thing, brothers and sisters. It's just a thing where it's a monkey see, monkey do thing going on. Now, hear me good and clear. If it is an honest, true move of God, okay, which can happen also, okay, which can happen also, the Holy Spirit is not going to have you acting like a wild, raving, mad animal, okay? The Holy Spirit does things in order, okay? The Holy Spirit is not going to do things unseemly. The Holy Spirit is not going to have people look crazy, beat up people, punching people, running around like a lunatic. Okay. When you see people looking and, and acting that way, they are some of them, not all possessed with a spirit of the devil. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. It's a demonic manifestation. Okay? Don't get caught up in what you see. And again, I'm not knocking a lot of churches, okay? Because there were times when I, I you know, went to a church, I felt the move of God, and, and it was awesome. Okay? I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. What I am saying is don't use the physical altar as a guaranteed place to feel the Spirit of God. I felt the move of God, and I gave myself to Christ in a park in the summer of 2004. And everything was orchestrated by God. The very day, my daughter told me, look at my testimony at the time. My daughter was like, Mommy, let's go to the park. And God supernaturally okay, made the girl in the park that I didn't even know. At that time, I was literally lost. At that time, I was literally crying out to God. Before I even came to the park, I didn't pray a lot, but I talked to God specifically in my spirit. And I wanted change. Listen to the testimony. Listen to what happened. And not even 10 or 15 minutes after I met this woman who was a woman of God, who was ministering to me in the park. And then after that, my life after that changed. I gave my life to Christ and I was never the same. So in a park setting, in a beach, in a supermarket, wherever you go, God is present. He's not confined to a physical church building. So do you become saved at an altar? It depends. It all depends. It's not a guarantee that when you give yourself to Christ that you are automatically saved because it depends on your heart. It depends on your motive. It depends on your walk with God and your consistency, just like a person who gets married. Just because they went down to the altar doesn't mean that they're going to stay married. 
It doesn't mean that they're going to be faithful to the vows. It's an individual walk, brothers and sisters. Don't get caught up in the ambiance. Don't get caught up in tradition places. Don't put your spirituality in a box and say just because everybody's doing it and everybody's uh, confined to doing it traditionally, this is exactly where it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. God is unlimited to a church physical building. Okay, don't try to put God in a box. Just because Charles Finney in the 1800s, you know, basically came out with this come to the altar, everybody's guaranteed to get saved. That pastor may not be of God. Huh? That could be a a, a pastor who is a, a pimp. That pastor could be a, a charlatan. That pastor could be somebody who is trying to hurry up the service. You know, I've seen this before, okay? And I'm just giving you a bird's eye view of what goes on in the church, and I hope this uh, message doesn't go too fast. But I've seen where you could, you, you see the people who are basically on staff with the, <laughs> with the uh, pastor there, and they're literally around the pastor strategically, and they're watching the person quote unquote, get saved. They're watching their movements and they're saying, come on, come on. They want them to speak in tongues and they're literally trying to mechanically uh, teach them how. (laughs) How can you teach a person to talk in tongues, brothers and sisters? That right there is a red flag. The Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's not a type of situation where you are being taught how to speak in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you utterance to speak in a heavenly language. You don't have to be coached. You don't have to be prompt. You don't have to be taught. It's, 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 listen, you don't have to feel phony about an experience. I think that that takes so much away from your relationship and that touch from God is when somebody who may not even be living right is kind of coaching you on. And a lot of it has to do with hurrying up the service. Oh, yeah. Hurrying it up. Come on, we got to go home. We got to count the money. We got to get out of here. We got to get out chicken going on. We got to do what we got to do during the week. We, we got to get this thing going. And the thing about the Holy Spirit is that you can't rush what God is doing. God may want to take an hour, real talk, an hour to uh, deal with a person or to commune with a person. Huh? And if you take that time out, just like if it, you know, you're expelling demons for a person or you're basically performing deliverance or if you're doing deliverance on a person and you're expelling demons, you could maybe get three, four demons out. But that person may have hundreds and thousands of demons in them. Okay, so that may take some more time if you rush it. And I'm not saying you have to be standing there for six hours. I'm just saying that sometimes God does things in his timing that may not be similar to what you deem enough or your timing. So what am I saying? What is this all about? What I'm saying is an altar call is not necessarily a bad thing, okay? Just because you went down to the altar, I'm not saying it's a bad traditional way to do things. You need to realize, brothers and sisters, that your salvation and your spiritual walk is not confined or limited to a church building. God should be everywhere you go, whether it be in your house. You should feel that move of God. You should have that time when you commune with God in your house, when you're driving, when you're on a beach, when you're in a library, when you're when you're in that secret place, wherever it is, brothers and sisters, do not confine God to four walls.